but we did a picture together and you were like, take your destiny into your own hands. And then we spoke to me. So, you know, I'm really excited to be here with you today and having this conversation. And so the film is super dope. Thank I'm you. glad I got to see it before we had this conversation because uh -huh. it helped me learn a lot more about you, things that I didn't know before. Oh, respect. Especially from the classical music, you know, background that you have. I was very impressed by that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually have a background. It's something that I learned after hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like I fell in love with it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, how it's like I, I evolved to it. You know what I mean? Sure. And uh, once I fell in love with it, I just, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? just got stuck in it. And I heard you uh, mention uh, Henry, Henry, Henry Mancini. Oh, yeah. And, Mancini. Uh, yeah. I had to study, I actually studied Mancini, uh, Leonard Bernstein, of course, you know, movies and Broadway plays. Sure. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of great, great, great composers. Of course, Maricone being, um, you know, from all the Spaghetti Western movies, mm -hmm. a big influence on me as well. And, you know, and I got a little fortunate when I first went to Hollywood after I did a movie called Kill Bill. Um, they hired me to do Blade, Blade Trinity. Mm -hmm. And during that process, I actually worked uh, at Hans Zimmer's complex, and it's, and it's full of composers. Yeah. And that was like a, a college course for me right there to kind of get there. And good for them, too, because they, at the time, hip hop or, you know, the style of beats and stuff that I was doing wasn't fully incorporated into Hollywood. Yet. Mm -hmm. So you'll start noticing that after Kill Bill, you start seeing more of hip hop finding its way into the definition. Sure. And also composers absorbing it, the sound palette into their things. But... Yeah, so even Hans Zimmer, him and his team over there has been a big help to me. That's dope. So, you know, classical music is an art in itself, right? So how did you feel when you were putting this film together and it came full circle with the classical music and then the integration of hip hop? Like, what was that feeling like for you? Uh, I would say it felt like um, um, achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best things you could do is set out on a goal and then achieve the goal. Uh, so we achieved our goal, you know. It was difficult for for my brothers to join the party, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, we caught, we captured some of that in the film. Uh, we don't play the film linear. Uh, we, we we play it more like as if you was, you could watch it in fragments and every piece could stand for itself. But um, I think in the middle of the film, we give you a scene where the stress of doing it is there. Mm -hmm. And it was, that stress was even there the night of the performance. It was like, um, but as Inspector Deck said in the film, and it said in real life, of course, that he just had to trust his brother. Right. And, and a lot of them, a lot of my brothers trusted me. Like, you know what? Riz knows what he's doing mm -hmm. here. He's always been foresight on what he does. We're going to roll with him. Right. Yeah. So sonically, like... Did you have a different experience? Like, what what were those feelings like when you were listening to the music and there was the incorporation with the classical and, and the tracks? Like, sonically, what was going on for you? Well, you get a different emotional pull, a different energy push, uh, a different, um, you know, <laughs> a different feel. I guess like, you get you get this epic mm -hmm. vibe in, uh, in, inside of you. Or if it's a song that has more strains, like in Tears, you get more of this e internal emotion. Instruments do that. Every mm -hmm. instrument represents a color or an emotion. And adding them on top of what we already created uh, enhanced the emotion of the songs. Sure, sure. So you've been a rapper, you've been an actor, now you're a film director. Like, in terms of all the moves you've made, do you feel like all the different facets of your career have helped you? just develop a better synergy for where you're at in the creative space when it comes to film. Oh yeah, of course, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, you know, as a film director, and this this is actually my fourth film now. Oh wow. Um, my, my, I think only my second documentary, well it's my fifth film, mm -hmm. but my second documentary. Um, growing up hip hop, making those albums and having Wu-Tang Clan as, as my cast members, mm -hmm. it prepared me for almost everything that I'm doing now. Right. So preparation is everything. And, and I look at my own self, even to be prepared to work with Wu-Tang and be the producer and be able to find their voices and find the right tracks for them, 
I realized later on that that came from growing up in a household with 11 brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So all those personalities you have to navigate, you know, and, and that life of living at home ended up becoming the life I lived through my art. And then that just continued to grow. So making an album, maybe we had, you know, 15 people. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you score on a movie, you got 60 to 70 people. And when you direct in a movie, you know, a feature film, mm -hmm. I mean, I had as much as 400 people working for me, you wow. know what I mean? Or working for the cause that I was the captain of. Mm -hmm. So any pivotal moments in the film or any challenges that you encountered that stood out the most for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, it was, I mean, for this particular film, um, we had a, the challenge of of knowing that we're going to capture anything that's going to be good. Um, you know, we, uh, me and Gerald had uh, pre-planned the shoots. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had um, camera ideas. I be, you know, I was requesting that we use a sports camera. Interesting. So that you could get those beautiful wide shots mm -hmm. of, of the zip line. Uh, but he's also, but Gerald is also a DP as well. So he's also good at the drones and the camera placement. But you'll notice that even though we, uh, the zip camera wasn't exactly totally sports, mm -hmm. whereas it could go from 500 to, to 35 millimeter, like that mm -hmm. type of zoom. But the also, but he did also. He set up a zip across the stage, and that, I think the zip across the stage, with the two counter movements of the one going this way, and then uh, Dolly going that way, it gave the edit the editor so much to play with. Sure. Um, but the biggest challenge, of course, was after we set all these cameras up. You know, maybe eight cameras. Uh, are we going to be able to get a good performance? Mm -hmm. Is is everything that we're doing going to happen mm -hmm. at the right time, at the right moment, based because this is live. We right. recorded this live. Which is crazy because it was incredible. I felt watching it, even though I wasn't there as an attendee, very part of what was going on. Oh, that's so cool. cinematically, it was dope. So that means we did our job. You did a great job. Well, thank you. Yet when you look back, is there anything that you would have changed or done differently? I know as a creator, sometimes you're very critical of our work. So of course, I mean, of course. I mean, I think like uh what can I say? Um I mean, I can't do nothing differently. So I'm gonna say I'm satisfied with what we Yeah. Way, you know? Got it, got it. So in terms of, you know, where you move forward, like, I feel like you've done so much, right? And you've accomplished so much. Is there anything else that you're looking forward to? Like, what else is left to do for you? Man, it's a lot to do, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, I'll just say that making films mm -hmm. is the greatest expression of art because in film, you get music, sure, fashion, colors, painting, sound, cameras, all these different elements, you know, has to come together to make a, a mm -hmm. picture. Um, even in the documentary, you know, there had to be a story that had to come out of the documentary. So as a storyteller, as an artist, making film is my, uh, you know, my evoluted point of life. Now. Right. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm doing, I'm thinking of that capacity. Um, and when you, when you look at music, as you know, now that I'm doing uh, orchestration, I actually have a, uh, I actually recorded a ballet, which wow. I, I wrote it mm -hmm. and uh, composed it. And I'm going to actually put that out and share it, you know, I just share it. You know, I've been blessed to have success. And so when you get, when you get to a point like that, I think as an artist, it's just your duty to just go ahead and keep finding ways to express and add on mm -hmm. to the zygus of the artistic world. Sure, and keep creating, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. what advice would you give to other creators who are coming up in this space in terms of like keeping themselves diverse and not maybe sticking to one facet of what they think is gonna work for them? Well, I would say the first thing is master one first. Mm -hmm. Once you master one, then you can apply that mastery to everything else. So I did master production, I mastered MC. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, so by the time the world met me, you know, I was already, you know, 15 years of writing lyrics. So it's like, sure. it wasn't meeting the guy that just picked up a pen mm -hmm. or a producer who just picked up the beat machine. Um, so mastered something first. And after that, yeah, take that ingredient and that knowledge and apply it to other things. Mm -hmm. And 
And, you know, evolution is everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're evolving, that means you're not the same as you were in your 20s that you're going to be in your 30s, mm -hmm. in your 30s into your 40s. Mm -hmm. These changes are going to happen naturally, biologically, I mean, physiology. It's going to change in you. Yeah. And so creatively, you should change. You know, uh, one of the, uh, I mean, arguably, one of the biggest directors in history is uh, Steven Spielberg, mm. right? But if you go back and watch his trajectory of films from Jaws to Close Encounter to Sinless List mm -hmm. to Amistad, mm -hmm. like you can see that he's constantly moving and moving to his last film he just did, The Fablemans, which right. is right back in his house, his own biography. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's a good example of growing, mastering, success, and yet continuing to evolve and find uh, a way to tell a new story as well as reinforce the main story of his own life, mm -hmm. which is growing up suburban uh, in a family that gets broken apart, as many families do in our country, right. uh, and yet finding a joy whether you found E.T. or you found the camera. For me, I found the beat machine. For Method Man, he found the microphone, you know what I mean? To express yourself and to continue to grow. Sure. So you're the official ambassador of Urban World Festival, right? Yeah, thank you. How important are these platforms for black creators? Man, I'll ask this last question. Yeah, for black creators, it's, it's, it's major important to have an outlet that we feel comfortable, that we could display our talent, our art, uh, and know that it will be, you know, shared. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more of these, and I think Urban World for for being who they are, you know, 27 years, and I look forward to coming here more and bringing more films. Yeah, well, thank you for this today. Well, thank I appreciate you. it for sure. So my favorite uh, Henry Mancini song is Moon River. Okay, okay, you did a great rendition of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. what's yours? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go. I ain't going to say Peter Gunn, but. I love I love I love his composing, right? So he has, you know, like a lot of dope TV themes that he's done. He you know, he did Police Woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, he did a lot of great TV themes, uh, which I sampled. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah.